Hey there you retro junkies, it's the Retro Viking back again, but today I'm going to be playing a modern game as I am sometimes known to do. We are in Fishing North Atlantic and we today are looking for swordfish. So we're going to purchase the most recent location that they've been spotted here from a local bar and then we're gonna get our boat all decked out make sure our, we're all fueled up and our gear is baited and we're ready to go i am using the emery which is a new boat that was added in dlc back in march so if you don't have this boat just check around the ports to find out which one that it is in and mainly because i don't remember which one i purchased it in but i use this boat because it can hold 120 deep lines and it has almost 300,000 pounds of storage that it can hold so if you do the math 120 lines and you're not gonna get more than 2,000 pounds of fish per line well if you add that all up 2,000 times 120 is around 240,000. This boat has 275,000, so there's no way you're gonna catch more swordfish than this boat, boat can hold. So this is the one to use if you're fishing for, in fact, in my last video that I did on tuna, I didn't have this boat yet, but from now on, I will be using this boat for all of my deep line fishing for both tuna and swordfish. If you didn't know, fishing for swordfish is almost exactly like fishing for tuna. The only difference is the bait. You're gonna be using squid when you fish for swordfish. Okay, a brief word on crew. When I do deep line fishing, I normally take a minimum of two and a maximum of three crew with me because you really only need two guys that are gonna be doing the hauling when you're bringing your fish aboard. And those same two guys can do setting your bait or anything else you need on board. Technically, you can get away with one because you can be the second guy that's helping haul the fish aboard when you're ready. Yeah, I'll take a little quick tour of my boat here. Got a little crew quarters here. A little empty room, I'm assuming, is a crew room. Air bait stored in the aft section back here. This is this section right here is where you're going to be hauling the fish aboard. And here's where you're setting your bait. All right, a little get the tour out of the way. So like I, like I was saying, you can get away with one crewman if you absolutely want to. But if you don't feel like being there to haul every single fish aboard yourself, then you need a minimum of two. I like to run with three just because I like to have that third gopher, you know, whatever I need that other guy to do, whether it's working on repairing the boat, if it gets damaged through the high seas or anything like that, or if he's working in the galley, making the meals for everybody when they're done working for the day, whatever. But then the reason why I use this formula is because the less crewmen you have on board, the more money you're going to make at the end of the day because you don't have to pay a whole bunch of people. So keep that in mind. Now, if your crew isn't well trained, like these two of these guys that I've got on this boat, they're the first two employees I ever hired when I started playing this game. And I've got over 500 hours into this game, so... These guys are well trained, so their stamina levels are high. They can work through a long shift of bringing aboard lots of fish and not getting tired. You may not have crew that can do that yet, especially if you're still relatively new to the game. Your crew are going to get tired, so you're going to have to have twice as many crew members on board so that when your first crew gets, when your first uh, set of crew gets tired, you could swap them out for a well-rested set and keep rotating them like that. You may have to do that, but if you have a well-trained crew, this is the setup that I like to use. So when you're setting the bait, this is all there is to it. What I like to do is I'll draw a line out on the map, set my uh, autopilot for max speed, and then just have my guy in the back. Now, you'll see the, uh, the bait box will go gray. 
and then I'll have to click on that and it turns green. That preps your next bait. And then once you get a minimum uh, distance away from your last set, and then the R button will be ready for you to set your next one. And then I just keep going on this. Now, while I'm doing this, I'm also keeping an eye on my sonar and I'm watching the fish. And I will continue to keep setting lines as long as the fish continue to keep showing up on the friggin sonar. See how right now there's a whole bunch of them and it's set for 100 meters. Long as they keep coming in off the right hand side of that little screen, then I know there's still swordfish under the boat. So I'm just going to keep setting lines. Once they start to run thin or they start they stop showing up at all then i know okay i'm getting too far ahead of the school of fish and eventually these lines are just going to start coming up empty that's when i change directions and i'm going to show you how i do that in just a second okay here we go it doesn't really look like the uh the swordfish are panning out that much more here they're starting to run low yeah, so now we're going to change our plotting here. We're going to remove that, and then we're going to plot ourselves a new course. So I'm going to move down a little bit, make a turn, and then we're going to draw a long line out heading back in the opposite direction. We don't want to get too close because, you know, sometimes it's, the boat's not going to follow that line exactly. It's going to drift left and right, port and starboard a little bit. So you don't want to get too close to your pre whip, whip, get, get that out of there. Okay, you don't want to drift too close to your previous set because then you won't be able to set any new ones. So we're going to speed up. There we go. Now we're ready to start setting again. And again, we set our uh, our autopilot to the max, and then we just follow this course and we continue setting deep lines. Okay. I think the rest of this is pretty self-explanatory, so we're gonna skip ahead to the next turn. All right, now this time, we didn't run out for quite a ways. Our initial start, as you can see, yeah, look at all these spots we went past our initial drop point from where that number one buoy is. We went well east of that one. So now we're gonna make our turn and we're gonna draw our line out just like we did before you see it's not a perfectly straight line the boat will drift back and forth making your line a little wobbly so you don't want to get too close let me reconfigure this one just a little bit that's a little better might still have problems hope not but and then once we set our line here we go we are ready to continue on okay i think you get the drift you know where we're going with this. I'm going to get a haul 120 of these deep lines set. And then when I come back, we're going to be ready to start pulling these things and hauling our fish aboard. Okay, all of our lines are in the water, but now we have to let them soak. You want these things to sit for a minimum of 18 hours, probably no more than 20 before you start hauling them aboard. So we need to look at our first buoy See, it's been soaking for a little over five hours. So we need to skip ahead here. And so we'll set our anchor for, we'll go 13 hours. That way it'll be just under 18. And let's see what we look like here. Okay. Our first ones have started to turn blue. That's good. That means there's, they've already hooked some fish. The rest of these, as time goes on, they will start to turn blue as they hook fish as well. Now, each one of these buoys can have up to three swordfish on them. Depends on how long you let them soak. But if you let them soak too long, you'll start losing your catch. So it's kind of a touch and go thing here. You don't, you can pull them, but you can pull them too early and not catch the maximum, or you can pull them too late and also not catch the maximum. So. However, full disclosure, I've already fished this area uh, two other sets, so I've already caught two full hulls worth of fish, so they're going to start to get less and less the more you fish the same area, so we'll see how many we get here.
okay two is not bad that's not bad at all so now i'm going to show you i'm going to take one of those crewmen away and we're going to pull up to this next buoy which means it's not going to pull the buoy aboard automatically you got to kind of creep up on it and then when you're in range it'll tell you to hold e and that's how you grab the buoy and then it'll automatically put you in the back of the boat so there we go and boom now i am in the place of one of the guys on the sideboard now you just want to aim for the bullseye it's a little mini game it's just like if you've done the tuna it's the exact same thing you just want to kind of put that cursor over the top of the fish's head and then I mean, if you want to you can save yourself some money by not having another crewman aboard and you can do that with every single one of these sets it's completely up to you most of the time i prefer to just drive and let my crew do it so that's basically all there is to this so i'm going to go through and pull uh, this is this is going to be the most time consuming part of this entire thing so i'm going to spare you that and not make you watch every single one of these get pulled aboard i'm going to jump ahead to the very end and we'll see at the end how much in weight I have actually caught with all of these fish. Now we can hold 275,000 pounds. I don't think we're gonna quite get there because I'm pretty sure I'm only averaging, if I remember correctly when I recorded this, it does pick up. I do start getting three fish uh, per set, but it's not until about halfway through, so I'm not going to max this out by any means. So, but we're going to see how good we can get. So stick around. We're going to skip to the end. Okay. We've got all of our fish aboard. Now we have to check and see where we're going to sell them. So we go to the finance tab, go over to fish prices, and then we see swordfish at Yarmouth is selling for almost $18 a pound. So let's check Lunenburg. 1664 now check lockport 1907 that's not a bad price and ingles head 1867 so far lockport is the best digby 1891 i don't think anybody's gonna beat lockport Dennis point is 1885 so it looks like lockport has the best price uh that's ingles head yeah lockport 1907 so it looks like that's where we're gonna go so now since we have everything aboard we have our crew in their resting positions we are going to just go up to find lockport on the map no that's dennis point there's lockport and we're gonna fast travel yep okay so we didn't fill the boat it's nowhere near, it's about half full which i was like i said i was averaging about two swordfish per line and swordfish are not as heavy as tuna so you're gonna have plenty of room on this boat for that but still 120 lines that's we got a lot of fish there we go there's our final count 230 swordfish and one tuna we've got 2.4 million now i got a four hundred thousand dollar bonus because of my port reputation but still that's two million dollars that you could get on something like this i mean there there's no other no other way in this game are you going to make money that fast that easily so just like with my tuna video swordfish the same way so consider this kind of like an extension because swordfish season comes at the end of tuna season and it goes a little bit longer so this is during the summer months this is the type of fishing you want to be doing in this game to make some serious fast money so now just to show you shortly after i recorded this footage i went out again this time fishing for tuna and as you can see i caught a lot more tuna and again, now this is almost, this is over a million dollars more than what I got in the swordfish. So it's crazy amounts of money, you guys. I've seen other YouTube tutorials on this game where people are like, oh, make $300,000 an hour fishing for this. And it's like, what? Why would you want to waste your time? 
You want to make some serious money and be able to buy every single boat in the game like I have? This is how you do it. So get your boats ready, get out there, get yourself some tuna and some swordfish, go for the big money fish, and we'll see you next time. Don't forget to like this video.